So here's a video showing the program that I've put on my micro bit to do some data logging. I'll start by enabling the log so that we can get some data as it uh, is inactive and then see, see the process. So just start the logging script and I'll describe what I've got going on here. The micro bit is connected with various leads. I've tried to keep the colours kind of consistent. The yellow lead goes through this resistor which is specifically to stop the micro bit getting blown up. Um, I learned that by experience that it's not a good idea to put 12 volts into one of the pins on the micro bit. And after this resistor it goes into an adjustable resistor, a potentiometer, where the green side is connected to ground, the same ground on the micro bit, and the ground on my supercapacitor. The black is connected to the positive on the supercapacitor, and the yellow is connected to the micro bit. So this allows me to sample a voltage that's greater than 3.3 volts using the full range of the analog converter on the micro bit which only goes up to 3.3 volts. So what I've done already is adjust this potentiometer so that when the voltage is as high as it's going to go which is about 4.3 volts I'm reading about full scale on the input. I've also got a voltmeter attached to the non-adjusted side of this arrangement so that we can go back and cross-reference it. Um, so at the moment the the voltage is pretty stable going up and down very slightly but the logging circuit hasn't detected any change. So you can see here um, it's actually displayed on my tablet but this is running on my Chromebook which is connected to the serial port. So there's a Python script running monitoring the serial port and when stuff is printed on the serial port it comes up on the screen here. There's a little light flashing to show us that all is still well and it hasn't crashed and then two lights that show an approximate indication of the voltage. So this the 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 center one is showing fifths of full scale and the next one is showing twenty fifths of full scale. So this is kind of mostly mostly nearly full scale but not not all the way. So that's three volts and full scale is about four and a half volts. So the the reason for building this was I've got this uh, supercapacitor four and a half farads and I've connected it up to this small circuit here which came out of my car. This is a aftermarket tire pressure monitor so it's got a little radio receiver in it and it connects to transmitters that go on each wheel and this has been sitting in my car for the last two years and the battery, lithium battery, has got rather unhappy and died. So I took it apart and I thought, I wonder what will happen if I connect a supercapacitor to it. Will it actually run for any length of time? Because it, it runs off 12 volts and then it charges the uh, battery up from that and it will run off uh, 3 volts quite happily. So we've got the supercapacitor and then this little um, board here is the protection board out of the old lithium battery because it's quite important that the supercapacitor doesn't go over 5.4 volts for this particular one. So uh, that protection circuit for the battery will perform a similar sort of job here. And what I want to do is see partly how quickly it discharges when the device is inactive and partly see just how how it behaves when I charge it up and leave the device running. 
So what's happened on the screen is you can see that the um, microbit has actually been running already for 24 minutes and it's captured three samples of data so far all fairly close together and at intervals of a couple of seconds so my guess is that the voltage reading has just varied very slightly and that's caused with a bit of noise these three readings to be sampled it isn't really that the voltage is increasing it's the the resistors are maybe warming up maybe there's a little bit of noise in in the circuit because the, there's no filtering on this and the micro bit isn't designed as a precision metering instrument so what i can do now while it's running is i could either leave it for another five minutes or so and see whether we get another reading taken or i could change the voltage on the supercapacitor by turning on the power supply so i've got a 12 volt power supply that's connected to this and if i turn it on we can see how that charges so the um the monitor actually switched on there it went bleep and you can see that the voltage is now creeping up and it's gone up and we've gone up the last few little steps and we're now reading 4.3 volts and on the the digital side of that this is about about a thousand which is roughly where I set the full scale for so you can see the voltage is stabilized and the readings have stabilized as well and this reading here it seems to have dropped very slightly and that that's agreeing with the the numbers so it won't do very much like this it's, it's running off the back off the external supply now so if I turn that off now the device is still running and it's discharging the capacitor and the capacitor is going down slowly so this is a uh, I think it's 5 farad, I think, looking at the, the markings on it. So you can work out, based on the, the rate of change of voltage, what the current draw is from this. And the, the, the voltage is dropping very slowly, and we're not taking readings too quickly, because... The way that I designed this, I I wanted to be able to take readings of a battery as it discharged over a few hours, and I decided that I didn't want a huge amount of data with lots of uh, noise on it, so I decided that I wouldn't take samples unless they were reasonably different or we'd been running for a long time. So it'll take a little while for it to take samples and actually looking at this you can see that it's dropped from 58 to 48 and it takes sample then it goes up a bit and it takes more samples and these these samples are close together because it's designed so when the voltage increases I want to get lots of data uh, in the case of discharging a battery when you remove the load then the battery tends to go up a little bit and I wanted to be able to capture that. So just to remind you this is running completely off the capacitor and clearly it's drawing a very small amount of current because the capacitor is only discharging quite slowly. But it's unlikely that this is going to give me a useful runtime because even in a roughly a minute that we've been running since it was turned off it's dropped uh, 20 25 units 
30, 30 units. So in only an hour or so, this will be completely discharged. But it, this, this, this is a way of capturing data over a long period of time without having to write down the measurements by hand. And I could do that. I could, every minute, take a reading off the multimeter. And that would give me the same sort of graph that uh, this has the ability to generate for me. So all I'm doing is logging the data to a text file. And then I can load that text file into uh, a spreadsheet and plot the graphs. So the data here is printed out in pretty much the same format as it's dumped to a file. So I'll leave this running for a while and then process it and uh, show a graph of what this looks like and um, upload some, uh, a description of how it all works.